Jujutsu Kaisen has a lot of tropes that many people say that has been done before in other shonen series. The inner demon inside of the main character showcased by Yuji and Sukuna which can be traced back to Naruto. The goofball sensei which is displayed by arguably the fan favorite character of this series in Satoru Gojo. The mini rivalry between the main character and his close friend Megumi which can be compared to many series such as Shaman King, Naruto, Dragon Ball Z and many others. Whilst having similar and recognizable tropes that we have seen before makes the series more comfortable to follow and you can actually make the argument that Jujutsu Kaisen not only used the classic shonen tropes that we have seen in classic shonen series but it upgraded them as well. For instance, Gojo's eyes. How many of you thought we would actually see Gojo's eyes so soon in the story? Me, just like many of you thought that we would get the famous eyes revealed probably endgame of the story, but we didn't. So not only does it follow the classic shonen tropes, but it has its own spin on them as well. But for me, what I think makes Jujutsu Kaisen stand out as a shonen title is that it's arguably the most realistic shonen series you will see, or at least one of the most realistic shonens to exist. Firstly, I want to talk about how the main group of heroes don't give a shit about ganging up on villains. How refreshing is this? How many times have we have went by and seen the main group of heroes being encountered by one of the villains of the series and it's only the main character or the strongest character amongst our heroes in that scenario who gets to fight the villain? There has been so many times I would be screaming at the TV at our own main heroes, why wouldn't they just gang up on the villain? One of the episodes in Shaman King 2021, we see Peyote and his teammates attack Team Ren, but it's only Ren who was fighting back. The most classic shonen of all, Dragon Ball Z had many opportunities to allow its characters to gang up on the villains. The Majin Buu arc when Gohan returned as Mr. Gohan. Yes, he could have soloed Super Buu, but still you can imagine if Gohan, Gotenks, and Piccolo ganged up on Super Buu that would guarantee the death of Majin Buu. There's so many more scenarios but that would mean I would have to go through every shonen anime and I'm sure you fellow tribe members don't have time like that. But these are just a couple scenarios from the top of my head. But Jujutsu Kaisen from the get go, episode 13, one of the main antagonists of the story Mahito gets ganged up by Nanami and Yuji. Yes Nanami was a little bit reluctant but he still did eventually allow Yuji to fight alongside him when he notices that Yuji has monstrous strength and durability. But it's not just a one off, we see it constantly throughout the story. Episodes 19 and 20 we see Yuji and Toto ganging up on a special great curse and one of the main villains of the story Hanami. They both worked together as a team and were dominating Hanami with Toto using his Woogie Woogie technique in combination with Yuji's black flash attack which was dealing some serious damage to Hanami. But it's not just our heroes ganging up on the villains, we see the main villains themselves gang up on our heroes such as in chapter 84 where Jogo and Hanami were ganging up on Gojo understandably then gang up on him as Gojo is the strongest in the whole verse. But it adds to the realism of these characters because remember Jogo thought he could take on Gojo but as we saw in episode 7 Gojo schooled him. It wasn't even a contest. Jogo is a hot headed guy. The guy is a walking volcano but even he is not blinded by his anger and pride and knows that he can't take on Gojo by himself. But the best part is all of the villains unanimously agree that none of them can take on Gojo. Even if all of them gang up on him, they will still lose as we saw in chapter 85. So they all decide to just seal him away in the prison room. This is such a realistic take on the villains as not only do the villains know they can't fight him one on one but they fully realize that they can't do anything as long as Gojo is around so they decide to seal him away potentially preventing another six eyed sorcerer from being born. The villains weren't hot headed or hurt by the pride in knowing that they are inferior to Gojo. They looked at the situation and understood if they want to progress in their plan they have to accept that they are weak against him so they have to seal him away without fighting him. Another point that makes this series so realistic is that the main trio of Yuji, Megumi and Nobara are normal teenagers. We have seen in many episodes and YouTube compilations of these characters just chilling around eating pizza, acting goofy and having banter with each other. This is something that we all do when we're with our own group of friends. They don't just chill out and hang around with each other just to give an exposition dump to the viewers. They actually just have a good time being around each other which is so pleasing and wholesome to see. It's kind of like the straw hats from One Piece. Whenever you see the straw hats just sailing on the sea, they're doing the same thing, goofing around and 
bantering each other. It's these realistic connections that they have with one another that makes us love and appreciate these characters even more. They're not just mindless robots for the story to just use for exposition purposes. Apart from Yuji, none of our characters care about being heroes. They're just doing good deeds and protecting innocent people because it's the right thing to do. We are seeing them be good people and not just hearing about it through constant heroic friendship speeches. And finally, we have the senseis of this series in Nanami and Gojo. Gojo currently in the story is 28 years old with Nanami being a year younger at the age of 27 respectively. Now they're both presented as the mentor slash sensei figure for our main trio but the thing is Gojo and Nanami are still young, they're still very much in their prime. They're not the typical shonen sensei character who will most likely be an old man past his prime and will be left as a comedic relief character by the end of the story. Yes, I'm looking at you Master Roshi. But unlike Roshi, Gojo and Nanami have many years left ahead of them. They're both old and experienced enough to be wise but are still young enough to make mistakes. An example of this being in chapter 90 where Gojo gets distracted by seeing Ghetto and subsequently he got captured because of this mistake. Nanami could have easily died against Mahito early on in the story if he fought Mahito by himself. He was being very stubborn in not letting Yuji fight alongside him. If he stuck to his guns and not let Yuji fight him against Mahito, he would have died there and then. Yes, he did eventually let Yuji join him but Yuji had to work hard and be very persistent and basically force his way into the fight thanks to the Jinpei incident earlier on. So they still make mistakes despite being the sensei figures of this series and you know what? That's fine. It just makes them more realistic as characters and they're still in their 20s as well so of course they will make mistakes. But these are the major points in my opinion that make Jujutsu Kaisen realistic and fun to watch. What about you guys? Do you agree that Jujutsu Kaisen is one of the most realistic shonens out there or has the most realistic shonen characters. I don't know, maybe there's other shonens more relatable and realistic but if there are, do let me know in the comments down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the Shaman Tribe.